and uh, welcome back to the uh, Folklore Workshop and uh, I'm going to discuss a commission that I'm just doing at the moment. Now this commission involves somebody's pet dog. They wanted a representation or a likeness to a pet dog that they have. Now it's always a difficult one when you take on commissions you know of this nature and I've done a few but there's always that baseline acceptance you know from my part that I will never ever fully be able to capture the personality and the actual um, full integrity of that particular species of dog as their pet um, you know as what I will say a fully fledged professional artist I am an amateur in all you know in all veins you know where it where this is concerned with artwork so ultimately honesty is the best policy and i always say i'll give my very best effort to provide a reasonable representation to that species of dog and indeed their pet so yeah i'll let you have a quick little look and uh, we'll have a little chat from there so on the workshop floor there you can see I've got loads of masking tape that's got sprayed different colours and that is from the uh, candy cane model and also the trail camo model. Now I've incorporated that uh, request for a pet dog in the trail camo model and um, I don't think it's come out too bad. And here we are, we have these three sticks here, the ones I've been working on. Obviously the pink and purple one is the candy cane model. And it's got the uh, traditional swirls. This one here next to it is the trail camo model. And that is that is actually featuring my traditional uh, fox head with obviously my logo in an actual... Um, the surround of the natural wood and that just sets it off now they haven't been uh, like gloss coated with a yacht varnish yet that is to come I'm just letting the paint to fully fully go off and that's that's a day in itself before I can varnish but the gentleman I'm talking about wanted a, a pet black um, Labrador and as you can see I have it here and yet again it's got the wood as a surround I do need to clean up the edges with a sharp knife but as you can see it's a black Labrador and obviously I couldn't do a fully black um, you know representation because obviously you would not see any of the detail so I've had to do like a a shading that gives a uh, the impression of black fur and I don't think it's come out too bad so I'll just start it uh, from the nose basically and I'll gently bring it around and it's a black Labrador and I'm hoping you can roughly see you know that that is a representation of a black Labrador Right the way through its tail. I do have to clean up some of it with a sharp knife where the paint is uh, got a bit of overspill. But as you can see, what I'm talking about, that's my representation of a black Labrador. And um, you know, I don't kid anybody to say that I can be a professional artist. And I find that is honesty is the best policy. But I've usually found, for what I charge for a stick, customers are usually happy with the results that I provide them with. And as you can see, I'm more than happy with that. The Troa Camel model and the Candy Cane model are, as I've mentioned before, 
or my answer to somebody who doesn't really want the wood look or natural look and it just offers them um, something different which might make them happier to have in their hand or basically even compete against uh, colourful hiking poles that uh, are on the market these days. It's just me offering something different in that kind of vein that uh, allows me to reach to that particular market as well. And um, I did originally think they would sell as a, um, a walking couple's uh, hiking stick, uh, his and her stick if you will, or put it that way. Um, but I found that they do set, tend to sell individually and um, for dual ones, uh, ironically, um, people request the hare and the fox on my basic range of sticks and I've always left wondering who's ever going to have the, out of a couple, who's going to have the fox and who's going to have the hare. But um, yeah, they, they, I have sold hares and foxes on sticks, uh, like a pair at a time to couples. And um, yeah, my original concept was it would be a his and her stick. But ironically, they're selling uh, individually. But um, yeah, I'll just let you have a very quick overlook. But bear in mind, it's not got the varnish coat. This is just the stick that's been straightened, the uh, copper tips put on. And it's actually had the spray coat and the artwork done. So here's a, a candy cane model and I do have a video on this particular model. Um, you know in its uh, finished form. But uh, as you can see this still needs varnish. And I'm touching it very gingerly because um, you know I'm still wait I still want 24 hours for this paint to fully dry. I've had to remove any of the masking tape uh, and any of the like um, transfer marks and things like that and like take off any bits of paint with a sharp knife because uh, once it's fully hardened you can chip big gouges out of it and while it's relatively soft you find that you can work it a little bit better. Um, I do actually use a very very sharp craft knife for this uh, operation and I find that works pretty good and I can use the tip to lift out any bits of uh, paint or tape or I can actually draw it back because it's a so sharp just to clean up any of the uh, the lines that I want to make more prominent but um, yeah as you can see I've got some nice designs there on this one and the traditional butterflies which um, just seems to work with it and I have those rolling down the whole shaft through the candy cane uh, twirl right the way down to the bottom but yeah um, you know this is quite a good seller and it's, an, it's, it's eye catching and believe it or not uh, uh, women who you know have these are more than happy to stay well to state that uh, you know they do get asked quite a lot of questions about it and um, you know which is always uh, flattering on my part anyway but as you can see it it's it's it really does look striking and particularly when there's varnish on it you know it's a good talking point right then this is the uh, trail camo and obviously, you know, the name does what it says on the tin basically. It's in the kind of field camouflage colour and, you know, I think that's quite apt for being out in the woods, the forests, on the trails and, you know, it just works. Um, it's not too heavy, there are parts of it you can just about see, you know, a little bit of wood grain on it yet again I've got a fox head there and I've got to clean that surround up but it sets off the fox head and the reason I use the fox on the, the trail camo model is because it's uh, you know stealthy in the shadows you know it's hiding and it's got a little bit of a, an aggressive nature and hence you know camo and that 
represents camo pretty much like you know what the purpose of camo is so it all just comes together and it, and and it, and it's a nice stick overall copper tip on this one and yet again once it's varnished all these colors will become extremely vibrant as well it is it's the the act it's taken me quite a while I had to experiment with different brands of uh, uh, paints you know to get what I would call a slightly electric um, sheen to the paint itself before I put the varnish on so you know you know it wasn't without a lot of trial and error just to get to this point and a fair bit of money to be honest you because uh, spray paints aren't cheap these days but I'm, I, I, it was worth investing the time and money because as you can see the results have paid off and uh, yeah once I add the varnish to this it goes whop and this will stand out a mile and um, you know it's really striking and yet again another good talking point but um, yeah I, I hope that you see that this is you know a really really nice hiking stick here and finally the, the gentleman's uh, stick and basically um, he did originally request it in the candy cane models but without the swirl um, he hadn't seen or, or or knew that I offered it in a camo uh, colour as well. So uh, as soon as I mentioned that, he stated he would take take me up on that. And uh, this one here doesn't have a copper tip. It's going to have a rubber one. And um, I can only suspect that he's requested a rubber one because he'll probably be using it, uh, you know, in a more urban setting. And, um, you know... You know, obviously a copper tip wouldn't do your uh, carpets or flooring or anything like that any good. And yeah, you know, obviously you don't want to be using, you know, a copper tip in a in a indoor situation because it will really rip up your flooring, carpet, and damage an interior. Um, it is simply an outdoors hiking stick tip that is the copper one. So yeah, a rubber one's going on this one. <clears throat> but yet again. If I let you have a quick look, and uh, I think it it, it kind of captures, you know, a black Labrador's kind of vibe. I will actually once I've got the varnish on, my method is basically to get the stick to that point, and before you know I send it off to the customer, I always take photographs and uh, I send them through messenger or any other means so that customer can fully confirm if uh, they're happy with it and uh, obviously if not like I say it gives me the opportunity to either correct uh, anything that they want or start again I mean this wouldn't be a waste for myself because it's not personalized somebody would buy uh, this one with that black Labrador so um, yeah I shall get this one fully varnished and then send photographs to the customer to confirm that happy before I send off to them. But yet again, you know, it will be a stunning stick. And those colours are really vibrant and electric. And like I said, I'm glad I invested the time to actually get the right, uh, the right colours and the right manufacturer to produce this effect on a hiking stick. But yeah. I'm really pleased with that actually because um, if you look you can actually see that it, it's meant to be of a dark or blackish nature it's just got that undertone without making it just basically a big black blob on the wood uh, which it would be if you tried to do complete shading or colouring in there's just enough there to make it look like it, it's it's you know meant to be um, a black Labrador. Well, um, you've seen uh, what I've been doing today with those uh, hiking sticks, and I uh, hope you kind of uh, enjoyed uh, seeing a little bit of what I've got up to there. I've always uh, uh, you know always said honesty is the best policy, and I always encourage people you know to have a look at my Facebook page so that they can see the work that I do in the particular style and how 
I get an end result and what my end result will more than likely look. And um, bearing in mind, once that has happened, most customers, you know, will proceed and they're always uh, happy with the end result. I always have a blueprint or a picture or something I work from and then I get to put that with my own style onto the hiking stick and um, you know and it always seems to work out okay and I, I feel that you know I offer a very you know good representation in my particular style now um, you know like I said but you do have to be honest and give the customer exactly you know a clear indication of what your level is and what you're going to produce right uh, after saying that i'll just talk about the bushwhacking model and for um you know I, i'm trying to get one of those builds on camera but um if you're in any doubt of the difference in the actual stick itself uh, the bushwhacking one the copper tip is this size my standard selling generic stick at just over an inch and a half is this you can see the difference there now bushwhacking one predominantly is for breaking open trails hence that heavy gauge and diameter of copper so yeah all that's left to be said now is uh, take care and i hope to catch you guys out on the trail right cheers <laughs>